Hey guys, so I thought today we would take a trip uh, in a 737 Boeing 700. We're going to go for a ride today in one of those and I thought we could have a look at how we can go from a cold and dark start uh, all the way to taking off and then landing. So I thought for today, we'll go from Wellington in New Zealand to Christchurch, which is about a 36 minute trip. Um, and let's set the time of day. Let's land. Towards the sunset would be quite nice. So I'll just go over basic, the basic setup of how we go through the startup procedure and just cover the basic settings of how we can actually get a plane like this started to begin with um, all the way through to uh, cruising altitude and then down to descent have a look and see the external view so here we are in Wellington International and we are on runway 16 okay so first step is we're going to want to go to the overhead panel and we're going to need to turn on the battery Okay, so the next step is we need to connect the ground power to provide um, extra external power. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to get everything we need to start just on the battery alone. So to do that, we're going to go to the, uh, the flight management system computer. And we're going to go to the FS actions, ground services. And we're going to request ground power. So that's going to take a minute or so to set. And if we go back outside, we can see now that there is a little ground power unit here, which is connecting to the plane. Okay, so that's now connected. So now we can go back to our overhead panel. And we can switch from the battery to the ground power by you know, going down. There we go. Okay, so we've got a bit more power, a bit more juice going to the plane now. So let's go back over here, uh, up higher, and we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna put the light on. So it's a bit dark in here. Now what we need to do is we need to set both of these um, inertial reference systems to navigate to the left and the right. Now these, these uh, modules that have a whole bunch of sensors in them to provide accurate information on positioning and velocity and all that sort of stuff for the plane. Um, we also need to Flick that one over to that. Um, so that's all we need to do there. So that's going to take a few minutes for that to align and uh, come up with a display. So while that's doing that, we can pop back down to this panel here, the overhead panel, and let's set the emergency lights to 
armed and we'll go up to the window heat here and we'll flick the side window, the front, the left window and the same with the right ones, we'll set those on. Then we've got the probe heats, so these provide heat to the pedo systems so they don't ice over, not that that's going to be a problem in Wellington at this time of year. But we'll put those on okay so let's just check back over here yep okay so that's come up there with the right readings I think that's right okay so now what we can do is head down back to the FMC okay so now we need to actually enter in our flight plan so that the plane knows where it's going. Right, so what we need to do first of all, let's get out of here. Okay, so there's no IRS position, so the plane doesn't know where we are. First of all, let's, let's fill up with fuel. So let's set the fuel to full. Okay, now let's go back. FMC. Right, here we go. So, first of all, we need to tell the plane where we are. So, here we can see there's these squares here, which basically means that the plane needs information, the computer needs information to fill this, otherwise, nothing's going to work. If it's got dashes, that means it's optional. But this has to be filled out. So, in order to get the current GPS location, we can go to the next page and we can just copy one of these to the scratch pad down here. Then we can go back and we can paste it into this. Okay, so now our last known position is correctly filled in. Okay, so we are in Wellington at the moment, so we're going to put the code for the airport in Wellington. And we're going to bang that in here. Okay, I don't know what gate we're at, but that doesn't matter. Alright, so let's go to the root screen now. And here we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to copy that current airport code that we're in into the origin. Now, we're on runway 16. Let's just double check that. Yes, runway 16. So let's bang that into the runway. Okay, our destination is going to be Christchurch Airport. So that's New Zealand, CH, NZCH. We're going to bang that in there. Okay. Now the next step is to go to our departure and arrival screen. Let's just check the departure from Wellington. We've selected runway 16. Now we're going to need to work out a standard instrument departure. Let's just choose the first one, because that's probably the most likely one that uh, matches our GPS. Um, yeah, okay, so that's good. So then we'll go back to the Departure and Arrivals tab, and we're going to go to the Arrivals tab for Christchurch, and we're going to select an approach. So we'll just go with the first one that's selected there, and our standard arrival route, let's choose that one. That's good as anything. Okay, so those are all selected now. So let's activate it and then let's execute it. Right, so now the performance initialization screen, which is this one here. So here we've got a whole bunch of boxes here that we need to fill. Otherwise, the flight director is not going to know what to do and our autopilot will get confused. So what we need to work out here is this is the zero fuel uh, calculation. So we've already in entered how much fuel we've got, so we can just paste that back in there. Now we want to allow at least 2,000 <coughs> 2, pounds of fuel in the reserve, just in case we have to do a go, a go around or what have you. 
and for the cost index 20 is a good number to bang in there now we need to work out our cruising altitude so for this, this is just a short flight so i'm just going to do 10,000 because it's it's i mean that's not what normally you do but this is a good um, height for allowing a good view actually so let's bang that in there we're going to put 100 which will convert that to 10,000 we don't need to worry about the wind the rest of that's looking good okay so the, now we can go to the m1 limit and skip that go to takeoff so now we need to set our flaps so for 737 takeoff flaps is around five so that's going to put that there right so we need to work out our center of gravity for the airframe that should automatically work it out so we can paste that in there now that's going to show us what our trim should be for our takeoff which is 6.71 okay so we'll change that in a second while we're still on the screen here's our v1 v2 speeds and rotate speeds it automatically calculates that based on our fuel load and our airframe um, weight so let's bang that in there automatically okay we're going to execute that okay so now before we leave this screen and go to do our trim we need to go to the legs section and here's our four pages of legs all the way to Christchurch and our current altitudes and the selected speeds so let's check through and make sure we don't have any errors we have one error here we've got a root discontinuity error so see these square boxes if it gets to this point and we haven't changed this the autopilot's not going to know where we're going so we need to delete this and get rid of it so all we're going to do is click this one and paste it on top of that which basically gets rid of it and then we have to execute it so that it saves let's check the next page there's nothing there that we need to worry about so our whole flight plan is set it's looking good okay now we need to go back and change our trim to 6.5 so this is going to take a little while Okay, so 6.71 was the recommended trim takeoff. Right, now we've done that, we can go to, uh, we need to go to the front flight deck panel. Okay, now, so here's where we need to turn on the autopilot and the flight directors. Okay, so you'll see we've got a flight director switch here. Let's turn that on. And there's another one over here. Both of them need to be on. Okay, so what we're going to do is we want to, our computer uh, flight plan that we've programmed here to connect to both the primary flight display and the navigation display. And we want that information to operate on the flight deck panel. So to do that, we're going to click LNAV, which is lateral navigation, which is going to take the information that we've put in our flight plan, and it's going to supersede everything else that we might have either by manually flying or the other settings we could have on the flight control deck. We're also going to use vertical navigation. If that will let me enable it. Okay, that's not going to let me turn that on for some reason. Not sure why. Okay, that's cool. Let's set the barometric pressure. Let's try that. And let's change, first of all, let's change the 
indicated airspeed autopilot to 200. It doesn't want to enable. I'm not sure why that's not coming on, but that's okay. We can adjust that in flight. That won't really matter. All good. Okay, so now let's go back to the overhead panel. Okay, so we can put the fasten seatbelt sign on. And we can put the yaw damper on. That's going to help orientate the plane, stop it from oscillating in an undesirable fashion. Next is the cabin pressure, which is set to 10,000 feet, which is what we're not going to go any higher than that anyway, so that's all good. Now, we need to actually get some fuel pumping into this thing. So to do that, we're going to come across the fuel pumps. We're going to flick on the left aft pump. Now, what we need to do is start the auxiliary power unit to provide more power to start the engines. So here's the APU. So we're going to flick that down to on, and then we're going to click it down to start. Now that's going to take a few seconds to ignite. And we should see this needle start to spin up. That's actually a temperature gauge. And that's telling us how hot the exhaust gas temperature is. So, and that's times a th times a hundred. So we're currently booming up. That's six hundred degrees, getting up to seven hundred degrees Celsius. So that's very hot. Okay, so that should flick back down. When that starts to come back down, we will see that the APU generator switch here. This should light up which tells us that we are good to go for transferring power from the ground power to the auxiliary power generator, which means we no longer need the little box on the ground. Okay, so that's done. So now we can transfer the power. Yep. Well, it's down. There we go. So the two inner switches. So now the ground power, we're not, we don't need it. So what we can do, we'll flip the anti-collision lights on and we'll go back to the FMC. We're going to go to menu and FS actions. We're going to go to ground services and we're going to release the ground power. It's disconnecting. Okay. We don't need that little fella anymore. He's disconnected. Yep, he's gone. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is remove the wheel chocks so that the plane can actually move. So to do that, we're going to put, well, first of all, we're going to put the handbrake on. Probably should have done that before, actually. Okay, so the handbrake here. We're going to click that. Handbrake is on. Now we can go back to FMC and we can remove the wheel chocks. When it's red, it's removed, and we should see the wheel chocks have been removed. This guy needs to get out of the way, because we are ready to start these engines. Okay, so that's that done. Right, now we need to go back overhead, and we need to put the fuel pumps on. Okay, so fuel pumps, here we go, let's put these all on. Right pump, right side as well. Get out of the way, there we go. And now we need to put the APU bleed on, which is going to provide a huge burst of air into the engines, which is going to help to start the engines. Okay, so to start the engines, we're going to start with the right engine first. Let's get a better view of this actually. Don't know if that is better actually. Okay, a little bit. Right, so what we're going to do is we are going to 
slick ground because we are we're igniting the engines from the ground. Okay, now we're going to select the right engine. Right, now you should see the right engine is starting to spool up. On the multifunction display here, you can see that the right engine has reached 25 um, RPM. So what we're going to do is we now need to actually go back a bit. We need to remove the engine cutoff on engine two. This will allow the engine to fully ignite and spool up. Okay, here we go. You can hear it and you can see it's really starting to rev up now. Okay, so here we've got the, uh, the oil pressure, the oil temperature in Celsius, the quantity of oil, and the engine vibration. Um, so if you've got a big number on that, you've got problems with your engine. But that's good. So that click you just heard is that right engine switching off. That's done. Well, not switching off, but the igniter switching off. So now we're going to do the same with the left. Switch that over. We should see that engine starting to slowly spool up. When it gets to around 22, 24, we can actually release that cutoff. So about now. For engine one. That will give it full range to start up. So you can notice there that as the engine's gotten more and more um, aggressively starting there is a bit more vibration but that's all within normal limits so that's fine. Okay so now we need to wait for that to switch off still on ground that'll switch to the off position like that and now we are ready to transfer the bus power to the engine so that we're no longer on the APU power so to do that we can flick the outer switches to on no on it doesn't like it. Come on. There we go. Okay, so now we need to turn the APU bleed off. Okay, and now that that's off, we can actually turn the whole APU off altogether. And now we're running solely on the engines. Okay, now we need to set the hydraulic pumps. Click those down. We need to set the packs for the, the fans to auto. Okay, and finally, let's put the old taxi lights on. We can change actually the um, strobe lights to strobe and steady. Right, now we need to go back to here and we need to set the flaps because they are not currently set for takeoff. So we want to set this to about five degrees flap. Which is about there I think. We should be able to tell by looking at this flap gauge here that should start going up. Okay, good, we're ready to go. Okay, so I think we're ready for takeoff. Okay.
So with that, I'm going to push forwards on my throttles and we should be away. Okay, I forgot to release the parking brake. Just a moment. All right, we're away. So we're not gonna go full throttle. We're gonna run it to around 98%. Destination, all the 
way down here in Christchurch. So we'll see you at the landing. Just reached 10,000 feet there, so autopilot is slowing it down. It's doing its job perfectly. Should be following the next waypoint at Tapeab. 1.5 nautical miles, it will turn to the right towards the next waypoint. This over here is an indication of the temperature of each engine in Celsius. So everything's looking fine. Here we go, we're turning. away from Rusby. So right in the middle of the Cook Strait there, heading towards the top of the South Island.
close to Christchurch Airport now, folks. Only a few minutes away. It's been a fantastic flight so far. to start getting ready to descend. Okay, so we're descending into Christchurch here. We have the landing gear down. According to our leg information, we need to be down to nearly 3,000 feet. I'm currently at 3,800 and descending. So we're on, we're on good target here, this is looking good. set the auto pilot to drop us to 2000 we're starting to turn so we're on that next leg now so we can drop this down to 2000 and we can set our vertical speed about a thousand which should work out just right So we don't over speed. Okay, so we're on the last three legs here before we hit the runway. Runway two. So hopefully this should line us up straight in line with the runway. And then I'll take it in down manually. So far this entire flight, I have not touched the yoke or the throttles, except just the initial thrust to get off the runway. Everything else has been controlled by the flight director as it is doing right now. So the runway will be over here. Let's see if we can 
see it in the distance. There it is, right down there. So it's lining us up perfectly without really doing anything. Okay, so now we need to drop our altitude again. So let's bring that down. Vertical speed. We have the landing gear down. And we should just be in a slow descent now. successfully made it to Christchurch.
shut it all down. Handbrake on. And engine shut down. Mission accomplished. Everyone's still alive. What a miracle. And there's the Novotel. Sounds like there's some work going on in there. What a trip. What a game. So there you go, folks. That's a, a brief tutorial on how to fly a 737. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you on the next one.